So two-way data binding is probably the first thing that got me hooked into using Angular a long time ago, and it means different things to different people, but for me, essentially two-way data binding is when you've got some data in your component that you can update on the fly, and it updates the UI uh, with whatever you're typing into an input, for example. So there are a few different ways to do this in Angular now, so I'm gonna take you through a few of the options and talk about some of the pros and cons, but first let me just reset my workspace. So first of all, I just want to demonstrate how Angular's change detection works and how it will update the UI based on changes that are happening in your component. So for example, in our app component, when it creates, we can access uh, its constructor function and do some setup. So I might want to actually update something periodically uh, within our app, maybe something like the time. So let's set an interval using some JavaScript code here and the interval that I'm going to run will run every one second. And all I'm going to do is update a member variable, the property on the class called time, which will be a string. And I'm just going to set the time property that we've created uh, equal to a new date object and just get the ISO string, uh, just so we've got the current time uh, in a format. And now while we've got this time property, we can just place that into our template uh, using template interpolation as we have done before. And what you'll find is when the app loads is every second, that's when we set the interval for, uh, the app is going to be updating. And uh, it's going to be updating that time property. And as you can see, uh, the value of time is uh, being updated in the app. So you can see that this app, uh, Angular is handling all of the updates for us. We're actually updating the time property on the class. And that in turn is being uh, displayed in the template and is updating every second. So let's just stop that for the moment. So that's demonstrating how any changes that we're making to values in our app component are reflected in our UI, but how do we take in some values from the UI and update things in the app component? Well, this is where the two-way data binding comes in, and as mentioned, there are different ways to do that. So the first way is just to use a simple event binding change event and then call a function in the component to update a property. So let's say we had an input. It's going to be a type of text and uh, we'll have a placeholder uh, of enter your name. So it's going to be a user input to actually uh, take in someone's name, for example. So we're going to set up an event binding for the input event. So anytime someone types something into the box, we'll get that immediate update. And what we're going to do when the input event is fired, we're going to actually uh, run a function. So the function will just be called update name. And as we have done before with event binding, we're going to pass the whole event object into this function. So we'll get an error because we haven't created that function yet. Let's go and do that now. Uh, let's get rid of this constructor as well. We don't need that all the time. Okay, so this is the function and basically we're going to be receiving the event from this which will be typed as a, a DOM event. And we're going to have a new property on the app component just called name which will initialize as an empty string. And what we want to do is take the event object that's been passed into this function and get the value of that input element and store the result into name. So you might think you'd do something like this. So this.name is equal to the event, and then you've got access to the target property, which is basically the input element. And then you'd expect to actually be able to get the value from it. But you can see we're getting some TypeScript errors here. And the reason for that is because uh, this event is generic and it doesn't really know what type of element has actually triggered the event. So we need to tell TypeScript what type of element we've actually got on our page. So a little bit of a pain, but not too problematic for us. So let's just say the uh, source is equal to the event.target, and then we can just cast the type to be a HTML input element, which I can find just here. So now we've got the source object here, the source element, which is the input element, and then we can just say the source.value. You can see that property is now available to us. And when this function runs, we'll be able to get the HTML input element and get its value and store it in name. So the only thing left to do now really is to go back to the app component and just using to template interpolation again is just to output the name. So now when we type something in, you can see it's updated directly on the page. So also just to demonstrate with this as well, if we actually initialize the value of name uh, to something else, you can see that's reflected on the page. And if we wanted to get the name value to be inside of the inputs as well, so we're synchronizing those two things and getting our two-way data binding, 
we would set our value uh, equal uh, to that name property too. So that's the first way that you can do two-way data binding in Angular, but obviously it's quite a lot of setup. You need to create a function for each of your inputs and you need to set up all these binding properties as well. So Angular provides you with some shortcuts to doing this with using the ng model directive. So we're going to take a look at how that works now. So let me just get rid of what we've got set up on this input for the moment. So there are a couple of different ways of using ng model and this first way I'm going to show you is going to be in combination with using a template reference. So let me show you how that looks. So the first thing we do is just reference ng model as a directive on the input and then we also create a template reference for this particular input as well. So we're going to just call it name, just referring to this input element. And we're actually going to assign ng model as well to this input field as well. And now when we save that, we'll get an error because we first of all need to actually make sure we have uh, the forms module ins installed into our app. Uh, so basically ng model comes under the Angular forms uh, module. So we just need to make sure that that's available to us. And we can do that here in the imports section of our app component. So now the error goes away, but we're not quite seeing the same uh, the result that we want to see as we did with the, uh, the previous version of our two-way data binding. We're just seeing object object in there at the moment. And the reason for that is because we're using a template reference for name now, but we want to actually set uh, get the value to display to the user. So we can just access name.value and then display that on the page. Uh, so now when we type anything in here to the input box, you can see we're getting that update uh, on the page at the moment. Uh, the only problem with this is we don't have a full two-way data binding because uh, when the app loads, you can see it's being uh, reset to an empty input box. So we've kind of lost that two-way data binding because we can't actually access the name property that's on the component. So if we want a full two-way data binding with ng model, we use something called the banana in the box. Uh, so what we do with that is basically provide an input of ng model, but also set it as an output as well. So you can combine an input and an output together here. And then if we just pass it the value of name, which is the property name on our class, and we don't need name.value anymore, what you'll find is that we're picking up the value that's stored in the component, which is initialized here. And then when we go into the input, we've got this two-way data binding so that uh, anything that I type in is being reflected and updated in the app component and also being displayed to the user in the UI. So this is probably the easiest and most effective way of setting up data bindings in your UI and your components simply because if I wanted to create more of these inputs I could just literally copy them and change the name so it could be like something like address, telephone number etc. And then all I need to actually do is make sure that those properties exist on the actual app component. And then we've got this two-way data binding and nothing else needs to be set up. So we don't need functions like this update name function, for example. And of course, that ng model forms the basis of creating a larger form, a, an input form that the user can type into and you can send data to uh, wherever you need it to go to. But there is another way to create forms in Angular and that is using the reactive forms module. So if you want to learn more about that, then you should definitely check out this next video where I'm going to give you some demonstrations on how to use reactive forms in Angular.